I'm here to talk to you briefly about realistic job previews. So what's the best way to recruit applicants? If you look at the want ads, you might think that uh, what we should be doing is accentuating the positive. Some organizations go so far as misrepresenting jobs uh, to make them seem more appealing than they really are. And the motivation here is to uh, get more applicants. So what's the advantage to this? Well, the advantage is that you get a better selection ratio. Uh, for each position filled, you get more applicants. And is that not the idea of recruiting? is to get as many applicants as you can. Well, maybe not. There's a number of uh, disadvantages here. If you get people who really don't like that job, then they're going to turn over, and there's a cost of that to the organization. There's, it takes time and money to screen applicants. And there can be a public relations problem. You, you, the organization could seem dishonest uh, because it is representing the jobs as more positive than they really are. Parkinson had an interesting point of view. He said that we should feature the negative aspects of the job. And if we did that, then only those people who were really suited to the job would apply. And so I guess the advantage here is that the demands of the screening process would be reduced and people who apply to the job would be well suited. At least they would volunteer to take on those negative aspects. Disadvantages here, you may get so few people to apply that you can't be selective. And in hiring, we would like to be selective. We would have uh, like to have a number of candidates to choose from. And you might get some people who are discouraged, even though they would be well suited for the job. And, and maybe you'd only get people who are really desperate for a job and not your particular job. Perhaps the middle way is the best way. And one way that we can approach this is through a realistic job preview. This is an honest presentation of a prospective job and of the organization that is provided to applicants. And it can take many different forms. Sometimes it is in a brochure or an ad. Uh, sometimes it's pre a presentation given by a job incumbent. Sometimes it's a visit to the site or the organization. More and more you're seeing videos being used on the internet or, or in other media to represent the, all of the elements of the job, both the positive and the negative. The idea of the realistic job preview came from Wanos. Uh, he was interviewing new recruits and he noticed a trend that occurred in terms of their job satisfaction. He, he was interviewing people both before and after they uh, started a job. And what he noted is that in the time after that a person made a decision to take the job, until they entered that job, they started the job, their job satisfaction rose uh, substantially. And, and then after they started the job, there was a decline, a steady decline over time that he referred to as the reality shock phase. And his thought was, well, you know, maybe we're not giving a realistic expectation of what jobs are, and, and we may in some ways be sabotaging ourselves and the job satisfaction of our uh, potential employees. What Wano said is that we should use realistic job previews in order to vaccinate expectations. If we do that, then people who really wouldn't like negative aspects of the job would select themselves out. And people wouldn't get unrealistic expectations of how much they're going to love the job. And they'll feel more committed to the organization because the organization was honest with them and uh, they might feel a a obliged to return that consideration to the organization. Uh, he thought that there would be increased 
tenure and decreased turnover, and that the performance and job satisfaction of people would increase because they would have a greater sense of role clarity in their job. So a lot of research was done over the over time on whether the uh, realistic job preview worked. In, in 1985, Premack and Wanos conducted a meta-analysis. Again, this is a study that synthesizes various studies, in this case 21 different studies, of the realistic job preview. Uh, so over 21 studies, 6,000 applicants observed here. They confirmed most of Wanos's hypotheses about the usefulness of realistic job previews. Uh, that in fact they do reduce turnover and increase performance. They lower expectations and increase self-selection out of the job for those who feel they're not suited. They do increase organizational commitment uh, and also job satisfaction. So realistic job previews, there's a, a quite a bit of evidence that they are an effective organizational practice when it comes to recruiting. Um, there were some interesting boundary conditions here that they did find is that realistic job previews are most likely to work when candidates have unrealistic expectations. So we might be thinking about people who are relatively new in their careers, who maybe haven't formed realistic expectations, who don't have a lot of information. So if you're recruiting for people early in the career cycle, realistic job previews may be even more effective. Also, applicants have to have a choice on whether they uh, can accept the job or not. So if we've got very high levels of unemployment, uh, realistic job previews uh, aren't quite as effective as when we have lower levels of uh, unemployment. And uh, we have to be looking at jobs that have some negative aspects that are likely to impact on the worker. The more negative aspects there are in the job, the greater the effectiveness of a realistic job preview. So I've included some of the references here if you want to go back to the source material. And uh, thank you for your attention.